sure how it, how it happens on the day. Bus pulls up here, you all get off. Talk me through what happens next. Yeah, so the bus would pull up in here. Uh, we'd usually go down Jordan's Road. This is the that dress room there. The way it goes is by alphabetical, so audically would always get this dress room here. So the bus would pull up, and this is when you start to feel that when you're driving into Crow Park and you're seeing the crowd, you're seeing everyone walk in and you see the cheers and everything going, this is where you really, now it's real. Like now you're in the stadium, you're through the crowds, you're getting ready to walk in the dressing room. So this is when the focus is very quiet, everyone's a bit mellow and you can just feel the tension because it's been a lot of sitting around, a lot of talking, but now it's time to, to show what you can do. And people just want to get into the dressing room, get into the kit, get into the, get the ball in the hand moving around. So when you walk in, this will be where the management will go. So the management will have all their room there for the statistics, what needs to go on, have their laptops out, go through all the players' information, put up the opposition stats and all that kind of stuff. Then we walk in here, which is the dressing room. So the way with Dublin, the way we do it is, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way across to 15, so that the players are in the numerical order. No lucky seats, no? No lucky seats, unfortunately. <laughs> all we have is lucky undergarments that we all wear, but... Uh, you still have yours? I still have mine, oh, yeah, yeah. I've been so lucky lately, no, unfortunately <laughs> not. So the soles would sit up here then, and then all the hydration, all the snacks, everything, gloves, everything would be set up here for the players. But it's literally, as soon as we get in here, bags down, into the kit, and then some lads just want to chill out, get their stuff together, prioritise, get set up, but the lads just want to get into the, into the astro pitch there, and just start kicking the ball around because that's how you relieve the tension is just by getting the ball in your hands, moving around and that's what kind of, that's the warm up area so we do a lot of training drills okay. in there as well. And from your memories of your time in 2011, is there a certain kind of, I suppose, tension in the dressing room before a match and just, does it ever come a time where it just goes quiet? There's a lot of tension within the dressing room, like all our final day, I'd like to say the dubs are kind of used to it now, but again, it's hard to get used to this all around final. It's what you're building up for. It's what you spend 10 months of the year prepping for. So there is a nervous tension there, but it kind of does, like all the hard work's been done. And if you know the hard work's been done, it makes it a lot easier. So there are plenty of teams that have been in here unprepared, but Dublin are prepared to the hilt for this one. So that kind of tension just goes once you get out on the pitch and once you're around everyone, like, you know, that kind of just eases out, especially when the whistle goes. Okay. How hard is it to concentrate in here on the things that you've got to focus on? What are the kind of, the kind of tricks that you use? The tricks would just be to surround yourself by people. I always found surrounding myself by the people that kind of, I like to be around the match there. Like, you know, there's people that can get very nervous, like, you know, they're in their own top process. They need to be just focused on what they need to do. And then there's other guys that can, like, they have an energy about them that makes you unwind and put you at ease a bit. Like, you know, I kind of like that. I don't want to be so tense and nervous going out onto the pitch. So it was nice to surround yourself with people that are like-minded and just want to move the ball and have a bit of a crack as well. Like, you know, because as I said, the hard work's been done. If you're not prepared by the time you're in here, you're already lost. Talk to me about your memories, particularly of that all Ireland final. Um, Brian Cullen was your captain at the time. Does Brian give like a rousing speech or was he like a quiet captain or how does that work? Tell me what you remember of it. You never hear the stories about Johnny Sexton that he can just command the dressing yes. room when he's Brian's that kind of guy. Brian was uh, a leader that when he said he's, he was going to do something, he did it, like, you know, and everyone had the utmost respect for him. So when you're going into war, and it is a war, like, you know, you want to have a leader there that's going to drive from the front, and that's what Brian was. So everyone had the utmost respect for him, but he kind of just, he, he didn't speak just for the sake of speaking. So when he spoke, it was all, this is what we need to do, and everyone just tuned in. Everyone's ears kind of perked up, <laughs> but it's just, he, he was just a really good guy to have around. He was with Dublin setup since he was 16, like you know. So he went through it all. He played with different managers, and he's just—he was brilliant to have him today. So you're getting ready. You're getting your kid on. Nerves at that stage, or do the nerves come into it? What do you remember? Yeah, about? nerves at that. I—I remember. <laughs> I wasn't starting, so uh, I wasn't as nervous as what probably the 15 were. But I remember just sitting here and just thinking, "This is it. This is why." You start playing football at seven years of age when you're kicking the football against the house, thinking, okay, I want to play in an all Ireland final. So that was my realisation actually when I was sitting here and I was looking around at everyone. And we went through a hard few years with Dublin. And you're looking at people's faces and you're saying, yeah, these guys are ready. These 15 are going to do the job. 
that needs to be done and I'm with them on that like 100%. Whatever's asked to be, whatever my role is, I'm ready to do it. And it was amazing just to have that sense of every, everyone together on it. And I suppose the nervousness came for me when I'm looking at the pitch and then you can't actually kick the ball because you're sitting on the bench, you're looking at the lads and they're, they're playing the game for you, but you're kicking, you're taking every hit with them. So I found it nervous. I would have been rather been on the pitch, like, you know. Yeah, rather be out there in the battle. And exactly, yeah. yeah. Talk me through what happens then when you're finished, get your kid on, you're walking out through the dressing room. So, yeah, this is, everyone just gets their kind of kid on here. And the way it would usually go is that players do their own thing. Like, you know, some players might want to go into the, the training area to stretch out, kick a few footballs around. Other players just want to sit in their groups or chill out and sit at the bench. Like, some people would have notes, their own notes, like, that they go through religiously. Like, uh, then the defender coach might come in and talk to defenders. The forwards might all get together just to rehash everything, talk about what's going through. And this is just kind of, there's a lot of people just quiet, there's no one hooping and hollering, it's just very relaxed, high five and like, you know, just that acknowledgement of being able to look someone in the eye and say, yeah, we're, we're ready for this, like, you know, that's the kind of, the energy that's in this room. That's pretty cool. Okay, where are we off to next then? The dressing room, oh sorry, the training room. Okay. So for me, this is kind of where I started to unwind a bit because you meet before the games and you're sitting down, you're talking through things, you're having your, your pre-match dinner, then you're sitting on a bus for a while. And once you get in here, you're able to move around. And to me and to, I think the majority of people, getting a football in your hand puts you at ease, like you know, you can start messing around. There will be a, a designated warm-up area for people to go through as a collective, but also to be different areas for like Steve and Cookson to do a bit of goalkeeping work there just on his hand with the goalkeeping coach. Uh, to be a stretching session, to be bands, speed bands, all that kind of stuff down there as well. So there'll be loads going on with that. Uh, and there'll be motivation quotes along the wall from different people, from different players over the years. I mean, is that a particular view? Or do you remember it? You know, I never really kind of got into it. Like, you yeah. know, Pillar would have been really big into it. Pat was more into what we had to do. So there would have been midfields points, defenders points, forwards points and it was just about focusing on yourself and remembering what your role was so once you knew your role you were kind of at ease going out on the pitch and that was all the motivation points and all the work for some people they don't work for everyone so there must have been like whatever about the energy and the nerves and the, the energy that must have been in here just for you and that must have been massive yeah. <laughs> like so, literally let me out of it and that was the thing you came in here and you know like, you're literally just 20 hours of getting on the pitch so all you want to do is get on the pitch uh, but like, again, there's a process to go through. I think Jim talks about process lot, more, than, yes. <laughs> more than everyone. So there is a process. You have to come in here, you have to loosen up, you have to go back in there, get your boots on, you have to get hydrated. Then you have to sit down and just get prepared and wait for, uh, for, for me, it was Brian or, or Pat to talk or Peter or whoever, and for, to the lads, it's gonna be Steven or Jim, like, you know, and once they say the few words, everyone will huddle up and then it's just get out there, like, you know. So with actually a pillar, what we used to do was uh, we'd be in here and then the subs would meet, meet us on the, on the side there and then they just all pat us on the back when we're, when we're running through and then we'd all run out together. But uh, under Jim and Pat, it was it's just everyone goes out together, like, you know. Okay. And when you're going out from this area out into the pitch, what, what goes through your head? Like, are you so focused on the match that that's all you're thinking about or do you actually take a moment to can I acknowledge where you're at and what you're doing? It's funny because you're, you're going to get 10 different answers if you ask 10 different people, you What's know? What's your answer then? My answer is like, this is what it was all about for me. Like getting into Crow Park, it's all I ever wanted to do as a kid. It's all I ever wanted to do when I was with Dublin was to put on the jersey and get out there and play. So it's a rare thing. Like, you know, it was, it's not, it doesn't happen every day. So you'll see people that will just tear it onto the pitch and blaze onto the pitch, get their picture taken. I always walked out to the pitch and just looked around for five seconds just to take it all in because it's a special thing. And I lied on final day, it was really special. So it probably took about 10 seconds. I don't even know if I made the picture, but yeah, it's a, it's a really cool thing just to walk out and the, the stadium play the music when you're walking out and then you see everyone and the cheer goes. It's just, it's an incredible feeling. Cool, well, let's take a walk through them and see how we get on.
few of the guys that have been over here the years, like just the, the, the music's coming out from the speakers here, you can hear the music. I don't know if you ever heard it from being in the stands <laughs> or whatever, yeah. like you know, the music will come and that just excites you even more. As I said, all the players have run out onto the pitch. Where I just kind of always had a bottle of water in my hand, walked out, and then like you're walking out to this full yeah, yeah, no, 82,000 people. So I just think people kind of lose it sometimes when they're running out. And they just run straight over, get their picture taken. Where I used to just walk out, yeah, look around, look around, look at this. It's amazing. The roar and the noise that must come at you as you come out of there must be immense. I hit you. It like, really does like hit a physical you. Yeah, yeah. Wall, like. And it's it's again, it, as I said, to me, it's, it was a real special thing to play in Crow Park and to play for your county. All Ireland final day. That's why I walked out to take it all in because it's. It's an amazing stadium. The crowds are always amazing. Like, you know, you can't help but get a big rush through you. Like, you know, it's, it's really hard to put into words once you step out onto this pitch with your mates and you hear the roar from the crowd and you look over to the hill and you just see the hill in full voice. And it's just, it's actually, it's just a special feeling. How big a part does the hill play? I mean, obviously, like, it is Dublin through and through. When you walk out, it's almost like a magnetic pull towards the hill. There is. It's uh, like, I remember in 2010 when we went through the back door, we kind of saw that the hill wasn't so kind, so it was sort of like that, like you know. But if you take to back, fast forward to 2011, when Steve was kicking that point, like you know, and when Kevin scored that goal, that energy, the noise, it just encapsulates you, like it just really takes over. And you have to remember, like you know, just get into position, just get into position. You can't take in, in what's going on there, you just forget about it. But for the opposition, from talking to past county players, like, you know, and current county players that have come up against it, they hate it. So, yeah. you know, it's a great thing to have from a Dublin point of view. And, like, it, it was always something that I grew up going to games on the hill and I'll finish up we'll take a walk going... Down towards the hill. I'll finish up going to games on the hill. So, like, the yeah. hill to me has always been a special place. Like, you could even see it the last day in, with the Tyrone match. The Tyrone broke away before the parade got to the hill. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and... Know. It, like remember the Mayo final in 2007 yeah. where yeah. Uh, they, came out, yeah. they came out and ran to the hill like yeah. you know so people say the hill doesn't play a factor to the opposition like it does why else do that like you know why else run away from the hill like you know I just think it's crazy like you know you're gonna ignite a fire in the, in your like from, an, from another county to do that it's from a double point of view it's gone well there that's so disrespectful like you know so it's already given you a an bit extra. of an extra mm. inch, like you know, I don't think you want to give this Dublin team any more <laughs> ammunition. So, like, talk you know? to me about the parade. Then you're coming out, you're doing your warm ups, so you get the team photo over and done with in like 2.5 seconds normally. <laughs> <laughs> three seconds, <laughs> three, three seconds, seconds. Okay, three seconds. Um, and then you're in the parade. What is going through? What is it like to walk around in the parade with the Artin band ahead of you? It, it, it's brilliant, like you know, because you can sort of that's when you really get to take it all in when you're walking around. You're just looking, you can actually see people. Like, I, I walk around, you're looking at the stands, you can see a few people that you know and whatever. And you have to remember just to get back centered, like, you know, so to walk around just to see the whole thing and take it all in, especially on the big days, it's just unbelievable. And I think that's the time where you can actually just kind of you know, get your thoughts together, like, you know, because you've come, you've come onto the pitch, you've gone through your warm, you've done everything you need to do. And now you're just get, you're ready, like you know, it's just walking into battle now. That's all it is. In terms of the match day itself, then, and your particular memory of that All Ireland final, and what it was like to be part of the Dublin team that won after such a long wait to get their hands on Sam Maguire again. What are your memories of the actual, you know, the match itself, and I suppose the celebrations afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> celebrations after a bit hazy, but uh, I suppose the build up to the game, it was our first All Ireland final since '95, so. There was no one on the team that had really had been there, like you know. So we recreated a lot of it beforehand. We did the whole walk around the pitch, our own pitch now, not Crow Park. Uh, we had uh, Mary McAleese yes. or something like that come out and shake our hands. I forget who it was now. Uh, but we did. You just you go through it, so you have to try and build for it, like you know, because it can't catch you off guard if you're not used to it. So we kind of did all that. So on the day itself you are prepared and like preparation is key for all this and as I said process is one thing but to to have it and to do it is another thing like you know so that's what it is it was just a process of getting to where we needed to be but when, when you came out here in all Ireland final day compared to any other day 
it's it's just different like you know there's there's a nervous excitement in the air everyone can feel it like you know there have been times you come into croker and you know you're better than the opposition you know you just have to do what you have to do but you know coming in on all the final day like you know it's and anything can happen like kind of scenario like you know it's it's just a wonderful place to be and when the final whistle went? Yeah, that's great, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I had the picture on my laptop, so... <laughs> Tell us about that, Eamon. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, when the whistle, like, I, I remember when Stephen kicked the ball over the bar, I was just like, get done, he get done, he. That's all I needed to do was make sure that he wasn't going to win the kick out. So when you look around, if you ever watch the clip back, you'll see Dublin players just scattered to the positions that they needed to be, that there's no way that it was Kerry Mann going to win that kick out. And that's it. So when the whistle went, like, what, 20, 30 seconds after, the excitement then like so the hill was going mad already for the 30 seconds but we were just we were focused and then I still like on my laptop I have just a picture of myself Brian Alan Massey Philly Keane O'Sullivan just all gathered together and hugging and just the sheer delight it's just it to have them pictures it's amazing and there's something I'll always treasure like Station.